Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to look at an interesting number theory problem. If two distinct integers a and b are picked from the range 1 to 100 and multiplied, what is the probability that the resulting number has exactly three factors? So let us summarize this question as follows. If n is a number obtained by multiplying a and b, we could write n as a times b. The properties of a and b are such that a and b are distinct. In other words, a cannot be equal to b. Furthermore, a and b should fall in the range 1 to 100. Now let's list the factors of n. The factors of n are 1, a, b and n. or we have a total of four factors. From the problem, we know that n should contain exactly three factors. This is possible only if a equals b. So let us keep a and proceed. So the factors of n could be rewritten as 1, 1, a and n or we have three factors. In general, when n is a perfect square, then it will contain odd number of factors. So here we have three factors, which is an odd number. So n is a perfect square. However, we are not sure if n has exactly three factors or more factors because we do not have any information about a. If a is a prime number, then n will contain exactly three factors. However, if a is a composite number, then n will have more than three factors. So let us write a as a product of two prime numbers, x and y. If a is a product of x and y, x and y are factors of a. If x and y are factors of a, and a is in turn a factor of n, then x and y correspondingly are factors of n. Therefore, the factors of n now become 1, x, y, a, and n, or a total of 5 factors. We are obliged to consider n as a number with exactly 3 factors. Therefore, a cannot be a composite number. Or in other words, A should be a prime number. So, N is a perfect square of a prime number. N could therefore be rewritten as either A times A or 1 times n. The case a times a is not applicable because we need to choose two distinct integers and by choosing a twice, we no longer adhere to this criteria that the numbers chosen have to be distinct. Therefore, the only form that n could take is as 1 times n. As a next step, let us choose some prime numbers and calculate the value of n. So let us choose the first prime number, which is 2. The chosen prime number is 2, then n equals 2 squared, that is 4. That is, n could be written as 1 times 4. The next prime number is 3. So n equals 3 squared, that in turn equals 9. So n could be written as 1 times 9. The next prime number is 5. n equals 5 squared, which is 25. So n could be written as 1 times 25. The next prime number is 7. n equals 7 squared, which is 49. So n could be written as 1 times 
49. The next prime number is 11. So n equals 11 squared, which is 121. However, this case is no longer applicable because n should contain only values that are between 1 and 100. And 121 is out of the range. So we cannot consider any values or any, any more prime numbers which are greater than 7. So we have only four possible values to consider. Next, let us compute the probability that the number has exactly three factors. Probability is nothing more than the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. Here, the number of favorable outcomes is 4, as we just calculated here. However, we do not know yet what the total number of outcomes is. To do so, let us calculate the total number of outcomes. This is nothing more than the number of ways in which we could pick two distinct integers a and b from a total of 100 numbers as listed here in the problem. So this is nothing more than 100 C2. 100 C2 could be rewritten as 100 times 99 divided by 2 or to simplify it a bit 50 times 99. Carrying over the value for the total number of outcomes the probability now becomes 4 divided by 50 times 99. We could eliminate 2 from the numerator and denominator. So the probability now becomes 2 divided by 25 times 99. This is the correct answer for this problem.